concerned. We want to thank the prayer director team that he and his team that are planning all these conventions. I tell you, God has been in it all, um, and I am excited about tonight. Tonight, I am a messenger. Um, I bring good news. I bring good news. I bring good news. You know, every ever since this month of prayer and fasting started, the elders, the deacons, together with all the believers, we have been praying for the conventions. You started off by praying for the pastor's convention, and soon enough, the speakers were clear who is going to be the speaker, and it was amazing. Then we prayed for the elders, and God gave us the perfect speakers. Then we prayed for the uh, deacon's prayer convention, and God gave us the best because of your prayers and because of your hunger. And so this week as well, God has given us the best. Can I get an amen from some hungry believers, hungry like I am hungry? God has yet again planned, planned. You know, we all had our plans in place uh, as elders, as deacons, and the team, and the pastors. We all all had our plans and the plans didn't go the way we were thinking they were going but God had his plans so I bring you good news that this week starting tomorrow night tomorrow night we have as our speakers until Friday prophet prophet not self-acclaimed before I tell you their names they are not self-acclaimed prophets moving around the street saying call me prophet these are an ordained prophet and prophetess of God, ordained by our Father, the Archbishop of God, and stationed at the place where Zayoja forward in faith started. Prophet Dr. John and Anna Moyonotra, those are going to be our speakers from tomorrow night. So I want you to prepare prepare, they move in the prophetic. But you know what? Our father always says, they can't bring out when you're not hungry. It's yours and my hunger that's going to pull out answers from them. That's going to pull out things from them that we need to, to pull out. So we ask you to, to pray for them. We ask you to ask them, God to use them to speak the word that we need, not the word that they want. We want you to pray for the connection. We want you to pray Pray that nothing interferes because they're going to be live. So we want you to pray for the transmission that nothing will hinder. You know, our mother always asks us to pray for the Sunday services uh, that go on the double impact. You don't know that there's a team of intercessors of pastors. We meet every Tuesday from all over the world Tuesday night to pray for that broadcast that the, there would be no distortion or disturbances in the transmission and that the word would flow. Amen. So we are ask you to pray for the same because our father said I like prophet John because he is accurate and he doesn't pretend. He speaks when God tells him to speak. Amen. So we, I'm excited about this week. Are you excited? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we are in a month of prayer and um, you know what? It's no longer a month. Do you realize that? We are probably into less than nine days, definitely less than 10 days uh, of prayer. You see, I'm not counting because I'm not in a rush for it to be over. I see that I've still got so much work to do and I'm not in a rush for it to be over. But we are in the month of prayer and fasting. So to, right now, I want to address the believers. We, the pastors had their convention. The elders had their convention. I'm telling you, lives were changed. The deacons, oh, I wish you could peep into the deacons forum, see what's happening. Up to today, they are blazing, singing, talking, doing all kinds of, it, it was something else. So this week, our father said this week is the week, and each week, our father would send a prayer um, at the end of the week, blessing the elders, blessing the deacons, blessing the pastors as they had ended their uh, prayer convention, and this week will be no different. So I want to speak to some believers right now, and I am a believer, I am one with you. So I want to say to you, you know, as the prayer month started, some pastors, some elders, some deacons, they were doing days and nights and so forth. Now this is your week and this is my week. 
I want to invite you, if you are strong, if you are able, if you are not on any kind of medication, our Father said in this year, be as strong as never before. I want to invite you to join me into some absolute fasting from Wednesday night to, to Friday evening or to Saturday after the prayer service. So if you, but you know, if you don't feel led and you feel like, you know what, if I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to have energy to pray, or I've already done a long fast, that's all right. We're not forcing anybody. That's why I'm opening this up to somebody who hasn't been given this opportunity. And I'm saying I'm going to be joining you in there. Let's go deeper. Let's go stronger. Let's seek the Lord. Let's zero in and see some things that no eye has seen and hear some things that no ear has heard. Amen. So to all the believers there, the invitation is out there. Let's do this. So that means you have exactly one day. You have tomorrow to get your house, your children, your husband or your wife in order, your room, prepare the place where you're going to pray. Even if you're going to work. I've done work uh, days and nights and in my secular job as a nurse going to work. But if you feel you can't, you can drink tea or you can drink soup at the end of the day, whatever you need to ha also have energy because uh, an absolute fast is not an excuse to stay in bed all day, you know, and say, oh, the Lord knows what I'm doing. No, 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 no. Absolute fast is a time to read like never before. You should be getting into the 20 chapters or more of the Bible, reading books that help you and encouraging you and praying like never before. Amen. So you want to prepare, you put everything in order tomorrow because you don't want to be distracted from the Wednesday when you start to go deeper. Amen. So be geared up. And I encourage us believers, you know, the pastors did their thing, elders, but they're still here because they're believers too. But I encourage you to stay focused. Oh, this, we are in that week where you don't want to play. You don't want to get distracted. You don't want to get into phone calls that distract you. You don't want to watch things that take you away from the presence of God. This week, like never before, you want to focus the way Mary focused at the tomb of Jesus. She came. He wasn't there. She ran to the ones he was closest to, the ones he used to go out for dinner with, you know, the disciples. She said, come see. They came. They saw empty, went. But she was focused. She said, I'm not going home. I'm not leaving here. I'm not leaving his presence. I'm not going nowhere until I see him. And you know what? God rewarded her focus, her diligence, her desperation. So this week, if you're not desperate, God bless you. Pray for some of us because some of us are desperate for some things. We're desperate for a move of God. So I encourage you, focus, 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 focus. Um, and God is going to move in our midst like never before. So I'm going to pray and we are going to start. Father, we thank you as we get into your word tonight. Thank you, Lord, that you have prepared great goodness for us. We thank you, Father. We release our hunger and our thirst right now, Lord, that your anointing, Lord, in the name of Jesus, which knows no distance, knows no time difference, Lord, your anointing would work to break bondages right now as your word goes forth to destroy yokes, to annihilate sins in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, to, to encourage the discouraged, to strengthen the weak, to heal the brokenhearted, to heal the sick. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, take over. And Lord, I surrender myself to you. Overshadow me by your Holy Spirit. Let people see Jesus Christ, not me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, think through my mind. See through my eyes. Cause my ears to hear and speak through my mouth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Somebody say amen. Come on, say amen. You, you know, you should see all the lights in this room. This room was fine because I was using this room earlier to pray and to hide. I was hiding in here 
uh, reading the word hiding because there were so many phone calls and door knocks and visitors. So I was hiding in a corner here. He, at one point, even my husband didn't know where I was. And the temperature was fine, but all these lights turned on. I feel like, you know, the AC. So y'all pray for me. Hallelujah. Now listen, before I, I tell you what we're talking about today, I want to tell you this important statement from our father, Dr. Guti. He says, if we miss it in the spiritual, we will have missed it in the physical. If we miss it in the spiritual, if you miss it in prayer this week, if you, you know, so what work has said, what they've said, so what your husband has said, what he said, your wife has done what she's done, your kids are doing what they're doing, or your money is doing what he's doing, or the doctor has said what he said. This week, it's about getting God's report on the matter, amen? So he says, if you miss it in the spiritual, if you miss it this week, it's going to show on the physical next week that you missed it. Amen. So don't miss it this week. Hallelujah. Then he says, the things of God are hidden. Come on. They are hidden. It's a mystery. But according to your prayer, God is going to reveal the mystery to you. So your car, your job, your husband, your peace, your security, your business ideas, your opportunities, your health, it's a mystery. It's hidden. It's there because the Bible says God has made the heavens and the earth with his outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for him. Amen. Nothing is too difficult for him. Even when Sarah laughed at the proclamation that she was going to have a child, he said, I am the Lord. Is there anything too hard for me? Nothing. You, nothing you are believing God for is too hard for him. But our father said, according to your prayer, the mystery is going to be revealed to you. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, get ready. So tonight, 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 we, my, the topic of my message is disturbances. 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 We all know what disturbances are. I mean, if you didn't know, you just have to, to look back two months ago when, like, you know, we, for example, we, the, the mission house had just moved and lockdown came before you even know where to go, where to set your foot, where to even park your car. It was lockdown and restrictions, amen? Disturbances, disturbances come in different forms. You can be going along your way and all of a sudden sickness comes up in your body. It's a disturbance. Everything was fine. You can be at the height of your career. Everything is moving smoothly and boom, bad news comes on the God forbid, but you know, it disturbances, hallelujah, you can be okay, everything is fine, and all of a sudden disturbance in the marriage, disturbance with the children, disturbance, things that interrupt us, amen, so that's what we are talking about tonight, disturbances. I'm going to take my reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 15, before you go to Matthew chapter 15, I do want to say to you that this um, particular story is also found in Mark chapter 7. But I want to take it from Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, because he was an eyewitness after all. He was, he was, he was. So I believe his version is more detailed and um, accurate. But we'll pick some things also. Uh, not that Mark is incorrect, but I, I'm going with Matthew tonight, amen. So we'll, we'll, we'll take it from Matthew chapter 15. Um, from verse 21, but we'll pick a couple of things also later on from Mark chapter 7. And um, it says, a Gentile shows her faith. This woman that we are about to talk about tonight under the topic disturbances is also known as the Syrophoenician woman, Syrophoenician woman from Syra and Phoenician where Jesus was going to there in Tyre and Sidon. She is also known as the Canaanite woman, same woman, just depending on who's uh, writing. So verse 21, Matthew chapter 15, verse 21, you know we have in church, um, I was laughing during the ladies when Bishop Prisca was preaching, 
and somebody wrote, I hope somebody is recording. I don't trust nobody to record for me. I record for myself. Come on. I write for myself. Amen. So we have in church, get your notebook out, you know, get your, your, your recorder out, whatever you're going to use to record. Do it for yourself. Amen. So verse 21, Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her, Not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And the Bible says, and her daughter was healed from that very moment. So just very quickly, um, a commentary, one of the commentaries as, as, as I was studying, you know, I have lots of commentaries and, um, you know, you can, it's not easy now, it's not hard nowadays, you can just Google if you don't have some, but it's good to have some reliable ones with you. So one of the commentaries on, on the book of Matthew uh, gives an outline of chapter by chapter of what Matthew's gospel is all about, from the birth of Jesus Christ to his death and to his resurrection. So it gives an outline chapter by chapter. And from chapter 13 to 16, right in the middle of the Gospel of Matthew, one scholar, one commentary said, in this portion of the book of Matthew, Matthew is talking about Jesus' withdrawal. That's all it's entitled, the middle of the book of Matthew, Jesus' withdrawal. Because in this portion of the book of Matthew, Jesus has come out of, number one, working very hard. You know, he, the Bible says he went about doing good, healing, delivering, you know, meeting needs everywhere he went, teaching, you know, you know, revealing um, what all the law and the prophets were talking about. He was working hard, amen, and um, all also, he was grooming the disciples, sending them, and explaining also uh, a, a lot of teaching, explaining uh, the kingdom of God. And that was, he was working hard. But not only that, he was also facing a lot of persecution. And the persecution had intensified. So part of the reason for his withdrawal was to step aside from the persecution for a moment, amen. So social isolation didn't start in COVID-19, hallelujah. You got to isolate yourself sometimes from certain people. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So he, um, you know, he stepped aside for a moment with his disciples and he said, you know what, lest we get confused about our assignment because of all this negativity going on with the Pharisees, lest we get distracted from our uh, purpose and our assignment, let's step aside and, you know, get closer to God so I can also explain some things for you. He also went aside perhaps just to rest, just to rest, because rest is important, amen? Rest is important. Sometimes we run and we run and we run. That's why um, I like what Dr. Guti said, I believe, at the end of the pastor's conference. He said, I'm so happy for you during this um, time of isolation. Um, he, he didn't call it lockdown. I like what he called it. He said, 
I think he said uh, hide away or, uh, you know, closed out, something like that. I liked how he put it. He said, I'm happy for you as pastors because sometimes you're so busy. You just read the word to survive. You know, your daily portion of reading, your daily portion of prayer. Sometimes you lack that time to just go deep and hide in God and go deeper. So he said, I'm happy for you for a month like this, for a time like this, that you are in, uh, you, you know, social distancing and isolation so you can go deeper. So that's what Jesus was doing. So he, you know, he was, um, he was out of town and Mark says he, wa he didn't want anyone to know it. But because of his greatness, because of his power, because of who he was and what he was able to do, he could not remain hidden. Amen. He could not remain hidden. He tried to hide, but he could not remain hidden. That goes to show us that even when things seem like they're working against us, God seems like he's not answering. Things have been said. Things have been declared. So who am I to believe for things outside the things that have been said or whatever? But God is attracted to the hungry. Jesus can be interrupted and disturbed by hunger. He can be interrupted and disturbed by a desperate person with desperate prayers full of faith. Amen. He can never deny uh, desperation. The Bible even says so that God fills the hungry with good things. Many people are praying, but God is looking for the hungry. Not just hungry because it's COVID-19 pandemic going on, but hungry for more of God, hungry to have more of him. So his time away was interrupted by this uh, desperate woman. Now, someone had preached to this woman about Jesus Christ. This woman had a situation going on. She had a demon-possessed child. Amen. We, the Bible gives no details, but we know it was bad. We know it was real bad. She had sleepless nights. She, that's why she came out all desperate the way she did. So someone preached to her and probably said, look, this situation has been going on so long. You've tried every doctor. You've tried everything. You've tried witch doctors. You've tried this. You've tried that. But there is a man in the city named Jesus Christ, and he's healing the sick. He's raising the dead. He's, he's restoring. He's doing all kinds of things that we have never seen before. He's healing the lepers. He's feeding the hungry, physically feeding thousands off of two loaves, three fish and five loaves. So he, she, someone said to him, that man named Jesus is coming to your city. So don't miss it. And so when, when, when this person preached to her, her spirit was stirred up. I hope I'm talking to some stirred up people this week. Because, you know, we've been listening to a lot of words. You know what I'm excited about? In 2015, uh, our father at the pastor's deeper life, he said, invite a lot of teachers to your churches, uh, as in pastors with different areas. You know, he said, invite teachers, invite those gifted in deliverance, invite the prophetic, invite different. He says, and as the teaching of the word is going on and also followed by signs and wonders, he said, the church is going to grow thick with knowledge. Now, we were pastoring in Australia, and now in Australia to fly a visitor, you got to think about the visa that can take six months to a year and the year is gone. So, but thank God for this uh, situation God has created. We have been hearing the word. I'm telling you, we are going to overtake that Zimbabwean church. Can I get a witness? We are going to overtake that South African church. They're boasting up in here, Bishop talking about South Africa doing this. We are taking over because we are becoming thick with the word of God. Different gifts teaching us, pouring into us. We are 
are becoming thick with the knowledge of the word of God. But now I want to challenge you to go beyond hearing, closing your phone, and going to bed to start doing something about what you are hearing. So this woman heard about Jesus. She heard about Jesus. She heard about Jesus. And her spirit was stirred up. She said, I'm going by myself to find him. I know I shouldn't be stepping up to him. I'm the wrong nationality. It's not the time yet, etc. He didn't call for a revival. He's not even seeing people because he's resting. He's in isolation. But I am going because I'm desperate. My faith is stirred up. So I want to encourage you as you approach this week with all that word that you've been hearing, even 5 a.m. prayer, I'm telling you, to forget the powerful preachers that we are watching on YouTube and that we have during conventions. 5 a.m. is where I'm telling you, if you've been missing, I wished I, have been, I had been recording all of them. Only over the last few days have I started recording because treasure is coming. And now it's time to do something about what you've been hearing. So she heard and her spirit was stirred. And because of what she heard and her open spirit, her ears were stirred up. Her eyes were stirred up. And she could see that this man is no ordinary man. He has my answer. He has what I'm looking for. Amen. So when you're desperate, you will pray different. And your prayers will make God do things that he hadn't even planned to do. Oh, when you're desperate, you'll do desperate things. You'll do different things. I remember Dr. Goody talking about how his brother was wrongfully arrested in prison. And he said, I prayed and I prayed and God didn't answer. God didn't speak. God didn't say a word. He said, I got to the point where now I started. He said, I went to the dustbin of the spirit thinking, maybe is this, is it this other sin that I didn't confess? Maybe it's this other person that I didn't apologize. Maybe it's this he was desperate for an answer. Are you desperate for your answer or you're still keeping your cool? You know, I, I can't be telling that to the elders, man. They, they don't need to know my business. That, they, you know what? It's still okay. You are still okay. For some of us, we, we didn't care what we look like and to who we look like it was because we, we, were, we are desperate that nothing's going to hinder the move of God this week. So when you're desperate, you confess even things that you may have done wrong. You just may think you didn't, but you may have. So you confess it because the Bible anyway says, blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Not after cars, not after jobs, come on. Not after husbands, not after wives. But blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled this week. Somebody's going to be filled in a new way. This week, if you focus on the right thing and that is is to see Jesus. This week is not just about praying for the job. It's not just about praying for the money. It's praying like Jacob said, I will not let you go. I will not let you go. I want something. What he was saying was, I've got, I got sheep. I've got cattle. I've got wives. I've got children. I've got everything. What I need is your presence. Uh, this week, if you are hungry, you are going to get filled, amen? So there are so many lessons we can learn from this woman about prayer and about receiving answers from God when we are in a time of prayer, amen? Number one, from this woman, we learn the importance of having a right relationship with God. You remember our father in the 10 days later and at the crossover message, he said, this year, make sure your relationship with God is right, with God, with God, with God. That's why I like that statement that is uh, in the New African Apostle, which says, be honest before God and man, with God. Make sure there are no secrets. Nothing hinders relationship like secrets that are, you know, how can you have a strong relationship with someone that you don't know? 
intimately that you keep things from. There can be no strong relationship there. So this is, uh, you know, one of the key things we learn from this woman is the importance of a solid, strong relationship with God. Amen. She had all kinds of obstacles before her, including even the disciples. Amen. But she determined that what I need is God, and I'm not going to be distracted about that. So she heard about Jesus and, and everything, and now she comes to him and cries out for a distance, thinking just like he did for blind Bartimaeus, he's going to do for me as I shout out from a distance. He's going to hear me. He's going to say, it is done, go. But through her, Jesus was going to teach us an important lesson. Amen. Uh, he, the Bible says she shouted, she cried out, meaning she was at a distance because you don't cry out when you're in somebody's face. She was at a distance. She was crying out. She wasn't yet where he was. She was crying out. But the Bible says he, it means he heard her because the Bible says he answered her not a word. He heard her. Some of us, we are praying. We are praying. But no answers yet because there are some things missing in our prayers. There are some things missing in our hearts. And today, this woman is going to give us some of those ingredients because it's hard to cry out after 21 days or 30 days of fasting. It's hard to cry out and, and, and have no answer. After three months of praying consistently every 5 a.m. and every evening, it's hard to keep on crying and you hear nothing. But he answered her, not a word, not because he was tired, but there were some things missing. If you and I expect the presence of God this week, we have to make sure, we have to make sure that our relationship with God is right. You know, I was teaching last week, I, I, I don't remember whether it was to the girls or, or where, but I was saying if you watch the crossover message, you will see uh, there that our father is not speaking in the pub. He's not preaching in the street to sinners. He's preaching in church to bishops, overseers, pastors, elders, deacons, church members, ushers, praise and worshipers. Come on. He's, 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 he was talking to God's children. So he, he was not limiting only the getting your relationship right to becoming born again, although that's the foundation, and that is critical, and you need to get that right. But he was talking about you and I getting rid of things that caused Jesus to answer not a word. Not a word. Come on, somebody. So if you and I expect to have answers, listen to this. Everyone wants an encounter with God. Everybody, everybody wants an encounter with God. But the presence of God is not cheap. The presence of God is not cheap. Prayer is easy. Fasting is easy. But hearing from God is not easy. Getting the presence of God is not easy. Hear Hearing and seeing what other people are not hearing and seeing is not cheap. The presence of God is not cheap. Amen. So yesterday, Dr. Yuna was preaching, and she said, it's good that you are going to get some answers after this month of prayer. You may get that money, that car that you've been praying for, or even that job, hallelujah. And we are also praying that you get it, amen. But she said, it's more important and critical to have the presence of God in your life and in your home, in my life and in my home, because the presence of God will meet every need. The presence of God. You know, if I just use this week to pray for money and I get money, money can't heal. Come on. Money can't get you. Money can get you makeup and plastic surgery, but money can't make a man love you. Money can't do certain things. Money can't get you freedom from spiritual husbands. Hallelujah. We need the presence of God because when you have the presence of God, it will meet every 
we need. So go deeper in your prayer this week. Don't just limit it to praying for things. Because Matthew chapter 6, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Amplified says, and his way of doing and being. And all these things, even that you haven't asked for, will be added unto you. You know, I want to tell you that I, I haven't prayed for money in this month. But what I have done in the lockdown is given more to the poor and sought the face of more and given more to servants of God. And I have ne the money I am receiving, I, I was saying I'm worried now that maybe Western Union may think something's happening. But God is giving even what I didn't ask him because my pursuit is him. My pursuit is him. It's not money. My pursuit is him. It's not people's approval. My pursuit is him. It's not things. My pursuit is him. So this week, the Bible says if you will seek him, all these things will be added unto you. Number two, lesson that we learn from this lady. Oh, the presence of God will meet every need. It will meet every need because guess what? The month of prayer is coming to an end. July is coming. August is coming. September is coming. Are you telling me that, you know, that that's all there is, that I just get a, a much anointing and blessing and, and, you know, new tongues and what, what, but I want the presence of God to go with me in July, to go with me in August, to go with me as we get into normal life again or new normal, whatever you you want to call it. I need the presence of God in these days that we are living in. Number two, we learn from this woman, important key, about approach. We learn about approach. The Bible says he answered her not a word because she thought a little cry like blind Bartimaeus would do it. She thought cooking like Mary and Martha would do it and ministering to him would do it, amen. And she thought, you know, all kinds of little bits of prayer and crying would do it. But some situation need you, if you are going to come to God, to come correct, to come correct. Because maybe like Esther, what you are asking for is too big for you to go and make those little itty bitty prayers without backing them up. Our father says, I believe it's two ways of knowing God. He says all night prayer meetings without practical repentance are useless, are wrong. That's what he says. So some things need you to come correct, to come in a different way, to learn the approach that is needed. So this woman, she, she teaches us that there are some things you get from the outer court. You can scream and go does oh he did it and you continue with life as normal as you were going with same habits mama Guti was saying same character only known that she fasted 30 days but we can't see the change anymore it went on the 30th of june that sweetness because you know how we're sweet because we're praying and we don't want nothing hindering us but she said this is how to live that's your tell type somebody this is my new normal this is my new normal. So she, she teaches that, that, that there are some things you can't get from God when there's a distance between you. Amen. So, and I love, what I love about the Lord is that sometimes it just takes a slight adjustment, a slight adjustment, and you get notice from Jesus. So, uh, and, and also, you know, as I was reading this, I was thinking, it's better to have Jesus be silent but he's in the vicinity. Be silent, but he's close to you in his presence, amen? So make sure you are getting things right so that you are in a position for when you can start to hear him. And you that's not up to him. That's not up to him. Even the healing of her daughter was not up to him. It was up to how she was going to approach what she was going to do, how long she was going to do it for. So I want to say to you this week, keep on praying. Keep on pushing. 
pushing, keep on seeking, because sometimes his silence is not a sign, a sign that he's not doing anything. Sometimes, like in the case of this woman, it's a test. It's a test to see how hungry are you. It's a test to see how desperate are you. Are you going to go more? Are you going to go deeper? Sometimes it's a test to see, are you only doing this because of the current situation? Or are you really serious about having a stronger relationship with God? But she passed the test. And this week, I want to say to you, pass the test. You can't afford to fail it. Pass the test. Correct your approach. Amen. Correct your approach. I got to move because of time. Number three. Number three lessons we learned from this woman. We learned that Jesus respects diligence and faith. Jesus respects diligence and faith. We can't ignore here Hebrews chapter 11, which says, um, it is, uh, you know, with uh, God, God rewards those who diligently seek him. Diligent, that's what our father was talking about when he says, seek it, make sure, uh, be stronger as never before in this year. Diligence doesn't mean when I feel like. Diligence means when my alarm clock rings and it's time to pray, I get up and I pray, not to turn on my go-to meeting and I'm muted. This week I can understand if an elder mutes, though I, I, you know, I can understand if the deacon mutes during prayer, but it's now believers' convention. I don't want to see any brother, sister, muting their microphone in prayer. We are here to do a work. We are here to get answers. We are here to get a move. We are here to summon the presence of God into our lives, into our city, into our nation. This ain't the time to mute and go back to sleep so that we can see Pastor Joylene was logged on, but you were sleeping. It's time to unmute. Somebody say unmute when it's time for prayer. Glory to God, glory to God. So first of all, you know, we learn diligence and faith. She came to him uh, probably casually, maybe half-heartedly. You know how you start when it's the beginning of the month? You know you got 30 days. So you, you, you start off, Chakayala Basanda, you know, and at exactly 4 o'clock you are breaking your fast. The tea is already prepared and everything. But as time moves on, priorities start to change, amen? Because you start to see this is not availing much, yet the Bible says the prayer of, of the righteous avail, availeth much. So this year we are going to do different things. Ah, it's time to be stronger. Is how you are praying stronger than how you were praying last year? Right now, how you are praying? Is that how you were praying when you were, when you were jobless in Chikombezi? Is that how you are praying now? Oh, our father said, strong as never before. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5, I believe, that Jesus Christ offered up vehement cries. It doesn't stop there, and it says tears unto God who was able to save him and was heard and was heard. Pray in such a way that you get heard this week, not to sign the register so pastor can see I'm not there, because pastor is also seeking God. I ain't got time this week to check the register. I'm seeking God, so you better mean business. The Bible says when he offered up prayers and supplications with vehement, vehement cries out of his mind cries and was heard. Are you, is the type of praying you are doing such that you are going to be heard this week? You know, there's a type of blessing. Ah, that message our mother taught yesterday, she said there's a blessing that comes when we are praying together. Oh, you feel like you're going to fly. You know, you're hearing Deaconess Mary, Brother Peter, uh, Mr. Mutao, Deacon Peter's praying. Ah, you feel like you can conquer any giant. You're like, bring it on. You're running in the lounge. You know, when they come up, I'll be running in the lounge. You should see me. I sweat. I run. I, you know, like a wild lion because I want something from God. Amen. There's an anointing day because everyone is bringing their fire. But she said deeper than that, deeper than that is your daily and hourly hunger. 
that God, I need you. I need more of you. God wants to bless you more than you want him to bless you. But he needs you to get some of these things out of the way. We also learn from this woman, we learn that answers to prayers are for those who seek him. Not because of the situation, but those who will seek him to get close enough to him to hear something. You know, she started out crying, and the Bible said, from a distance, and the Bible says he answered her not a word. She continued crying, and the disciples answered. She heard something, but it wasn't what she wanted to hear. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Are you hearing what you want to hear yet? If not, this is your week. This is your week. This is your week. Come on, type. This is my week. This is my week. She heard the disciple saying, she sent her away. She keeps crying after us, meaning she was running, getting close, crying, son of David, son of David. Then guess what? She gets an answer finally from Jesus, but it's a negative. He says, I hear you, but you are you are ahead of time. I'm not sent to you, a Gentile. I hear you, but I'm not sent to you. So in other words, go back home. Stop calling me because it's not time yet for what you're asking for. It's not time yet for you to be asking for that promotion because it's a pandemic. It's not time yet to believe for that promotion because they've just written you a termination letter. It's not time yet and it was not time yet but she made up her mind this is my day and I am not taking no for an answer she didn't stop until she got his attention and she got the answer that she wanted and you can get it too this week if you was this story is not in the bible for any other reason, but for such a time as this, to encourage people like you and I so that to know that no matter what people have said, no matter what situations are saying, we can be heard by God and things can change that we're not supposed to change. So she moved up closer and stopped shouting. Oh, I love this. That's why I love the story from the book of Matthew, because the Bible says she was crying out. She was shouting. She was making loud noises, you know, but it was just noise from a distance. Then she stopped crying after the negative answer. And the Bible says, then she came and worshipped him. She came, meaning she came closer to him. She removed the obstacles. She removed the disciples' voices. Ah, whose voices do you need to remove this week in order to hear from God? Which things do you need to remove this week in order to hear from God? Because it's critical. It's critical in these days that we're living in. Hallelujah. So she worshipped, and her posture reminds me of when the Bible says a broken and a contrite heart the Lord will not despise. That means there are some prayers that he's despising. Oh, because Isaiah chapter 58 in the New Living Translation says I'm not attending to your fasting because you're fasting to please yourself to say you can do it and you have done it and to testify I thank God in the month of prayer for 30 days I did this and I sought this and I prayed this he said you're doing it to please yourself but that is just going through the motions read it in the New Living Translations hallelujah but the Bible says uh, but there is a prayer God can't resist it's the broken and a contrite heart he will not despise it that means he, he will respect it he will honor it so broken and contrite we see her being broken and contrite because now she comes Jesus says I can't attend to you because I'm not sent to you 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 know you're ahead of schedule I'm not sent to you that's what he said to her he said I'm not sent to you I'm sent to the child to the house of Israel right now and she was saying I can hear what you're saying I hear what you're saying and I understand what you're saying but I am desperate amen I am desperate 
desperate. I know I'm the wrong nationality. I know I have a past. I know I've done some things and said some things that I shouldn't have, and I've repented and I've confessed. I know it's not time yet. I know the news is saying it's not the situation yet, but I need you. I need you. And guess what? Acts 17, 27 says to you and I, it says, he is not far. Whoa, it says, so that they should search for him and grope for him in the hope that they may find him. Though he is not far from any one of us, grope for him. What the Bible's talking about, when you know the word grope is used for a blind man, how they search for things because they can't see. Right now, you can't see God moving. You can't really see him, but you're groping. You can't see because you've heard so much bad news and there's so much negativity going around. But the Bible says, because he is not far, he is not far, keep groping. Ah, this week, keep groping. Keep on waking up earlier. Keep on sleeping less. I said in the month of prayer, three hours of sleep is too much. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. Don't compete with the dead. Hallelujah. It's babies that we expect to sleep. And we say, how long did she sleep? Because they grow as they sleep. You and I, we've grown a lot all these other years. Now it's time to seek God. Hallelujah. 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 He is not far from each one of us. This week, will you find him? Will you grope for him until you find him? Will you seek? Will you seek like a blind man? They need that direction. They need that thing. They search. They hold. That's how even to know you. If they don't hear your voice, they smell your perfume. If they don't smell your perfume, they will touch and they can tell this is Joylene, this is Joram, this is so and so, this is Susan, this is so and so. They grow up until they get it. Why are you relaxing? Why are you relaxing? Why are you relaxing? You gotta grow up. We've got to fight. After all, our father said some didn't finish praying for your spiritual eyes to be open and your spiritual ears leading to the genuine fear of God. Come on, come on. We got to grow up until there's some genuine fear in here. Fear, fear, fear of God in here. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then she came close. She worshiped him and, and she asked him again. This time she got a negative answer and she reminded him of his mercy because he said, I'm not saying, but to the Lordship of the house of Israel, then he said, it's not good for me to give the, ch the children's bread to the little dogs. And she didn't stop and get distracted by the minor. Some of us get easily distracted, majoring on the man. Who said what? When did they say that? And you're searching gossip in this time of month of prayer and fasting, busy keeping bitterness in this time of month of fasting. Come on, lay that thing aside. It's time to seek God and to hear God. Amen. So she reminded him. She said, but Lord, even the little dogs have to eat. She reminded him. What scriptures have you been memorizing to remind God? Oh, I, I've got a whole book now of scriptures that I'm memorizing and, and, and speaking in prayer. You know, even that's why sometimes I pray away from my mic, because if you hear, then you just might be like, mm, what's she talking about? Come on. I got some, because I'm reminding God of his word. And the Bible says, God is not a respecter of persons. If you will use the same principles, you, you will get the same result. Now, as I'm getting ready to close now, I want to read just a little portion from our father's book, Guidance and Example of a Praying Church. He says, if you do what they did, you will receive what they received. If you do what they did, come on, what Esther did to lay aside food. You think declaring that fast was easy? It was hard, but she said, I'm going to fast. You also fast for me. Hallelujah. It was not easy, but she knew because she said, if I perish, I perish. She knew this is a life and death situation. You see, sometimes you need your eyes to be open to see that the stuff you're going through is not normal, that this year really isn't a normal year, and it really doesn't.
just need desperate prayers. Come on. Hallelujah. So our father said, if you do what they did, you will receive what they received. If you come to Jesus, mind you, it's page 33. If you come to Jesus the way they came, not the way you want to come. Oh, you know, that Pharisee went to pray with someone else, and he said, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like so-and-so. Me, I'm better. Me, I do this. Ah, me, I'm better. I'm better. I go there, and I do this, and I do that, and I do this. And the other man came and said, Lord, I'm a sinner. Have mercy on me. Then Jesus said, which of these do you think got an answer, ah? Hallelujah. What that Pharisee was saying, he was not lying. He was doing those things. And those things were good. It was his attitude that God was teaching us that I don't want that in prayer. Amen. I want you to be real in prayer. So our father says, if you come to Jesus the way they came to Jesus, Esther, Nehemiah, this Syrophoenician woman, you will get what they got. If you pray the way they prayed and believe the way they believed. You will be saved. You will be set free. Come on. You will be delivered. Who needs to be delivered this week? You know, uh, overseer Mtumbwa, he taught us on uh, seeing when there's a demon operating in me. You know, to see that, oh, wow, this is not normal. I hope you didn't close the, the page and say, oh, powerful word from overseer Mtumbwa. I hope you have been fighting things this week. I hope you have been fighting those things because they, he couldn't do a deliverance session in one hour and finish. We are having online church. It can't finish in this one hour broadcast. That's why we are saying enough to sleeping, enough to being lazy to pray. Baba Guti said people want good things, but they are lazy to dig. They are lazy to do what it takes. Hallelujah. You will be set free if you pray like they prayed and do what they do, you will be saved. You will be set free. You will be delivered. Your sins will be forgiven. Hallelujah. Call him now the way they called him. And the Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. God is not a respecter of persons. Oh, these things, the Bible says in the book of John, as it concludes, it says, these things are written so that we can can learn and we can be encouraged when you read about Jacob how Jacob was so blessed yet he was lying there uh, in isolation he could have anything he could have he could he didn't have to do that actually because he had enough manpower he had everything but he realized I've got everything but I don't have the favor of God because I've done some things that are bad in my past and now I need the prayer of God. And he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. He wrestled with God, meaning that angel was about to leave him. He was saying, leave me. Yes, I'm not far from you, but leave me. You are a supplanter. Leave me. You are a liar. Leave me. You stole your brother's birthright. But he said, now that I have you, I will not let you go until you bless me. And the Bible says he wrestled with God and he came out with an answer. Are you going to wrestle this week? Esther said, if I perish, I perish. Listen, you're not going to die from switching off those movies. You're not going to die from praying more, eating less. You're not going to die for one week concentrating and focusing on God. You're not going to die by unmuting your mic and praying with others. You're not going to die. Hallelujah. Hezekiah. Hezekiah. Ooh. Oh, I love Hezekiah because the man of God came and said, Hezekiah, the ego eye prophet, Isaiah, ego eye because he never prophesied things that didn't happen like some of this 
junk going on today of all these false prophets. But when Isaiah prophesied, you knew it was going to be as he said. This eagle eye prophet that Hezekiah respected came and said, the Lord said, put your house in order. You are going to die. Hezekiah didn't plead with Isaiah. Come on. Ah, he didn't plead with Isaiah. The Bible says he faced the wall. That means he to, he, he gave his back to all the gossiping. He gave his back to all the lying. He gave his back to all the nonsense. The TV, the fun, the going around the mall. This week we are fasting. We're seeking the face of God. So he turned his back on everything. And he said, Lord, I heard what your man said. I heard what your servant said. I heard what the prophet, the eagle eye prophet said. He said, I heard, I heard, I heard, but Lord, I have come. I have come. The Bible says he wept, and then he said, Lord, remember. Ooh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He said, Lord, remember. And he prayed in such a way, all by himself, no husband clapping hands for him, no elder, no pastor saying, go, 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 we are nearly there, oh, nine more days to go, nobody, nobody encouraging him. He turned his face to the wall and said, God, these three months I've been doing nothing but seeking your face, and now in this month of fasting, you're going to let it end, and I haven't got my answers, and I haven't got my presence, Lord remember, Lord remember that's why you need to confess because when you say Lord remember the good that I have done, but there's also some bad it's a mixture that's not gonna work, are you hearing that it's not gonna work, so you gotta make sure you confess, that's why in the month of June our father used to always write and say go to faith clinic to the, you know as pastors elders, deacons, we all did faith clinic, if your husband and wife do faith clean, pour out, apologize, you know, even if you're not married, pour out, find somebody to pour out some of the things you, you have done that I, you know, is, there are some things you can confess to God and it's okay, it's all done, but there are some things that, that guilt comes every time you kneel down. Those are the things you need to take to faith clinic and you need to do it because it's, it's paramount. So Hezekiah turned to the wall and he said, Lord, remember, and guess what, that same prophet, ego, I prophet, came and said, the Lord has added 15 more years. Ah, Jesus had gone to rest in this city. He had gone to rest in this city. But this woman who had tenacious faith, who had persistent faith, she took him out of rest mode because he can't resist faith. He can't resist people who come to him with the right approach. And so tonight we want to go into prayer and say, God, in this last week of our month of fasting and prayer in these last nine days. Lord, the woman, the Syrophoenician woman, in one day, she got your attention. Oh, our father said, I fought with the spirit of anger for one year. For one year, and God delivered me. Then he said, you, it doesn't have to take you a year because I was not full of the word of God. Now you and I have been receiving the word every 5 a.m. morning, every Thursday night, every Wednesday, every Friday, every Saturday, word every single day. We have enough word to make a difference now. So the prayer commander come back. We want to go before the Lord and find some things and say, Lord, ah, I need you to move. Lord, I need you to fill me. I'm hungry and thirsty. Ah, it's not about the car, Lord. It's not about the house, Lord. It's not about the money, Lord. Lord, it's about your presence because your presence will meet every need. Lord, I won't let you go this week until you bless me, until you touch me. Because when Jacob said it, God didn't give him a car. God changed his name. God opened his eyes to see who he 
really wants. This week, if you see God with hunger, he's going to open your eyes to see who you really are. You are not what your job says. You are not what your ex-husband said. You are not what your boss is saying. You are not what the doctor said. But it needs you to be tenacious. It needs you to be bold and angry in prayer. Come on, unmute your mics. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. Unmute, unmute, unmute. It's time to pray. Say, Lord, I'm not going to let you go. This week, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Until you bless me. Until you bless me. Until you bless me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to 